So in this question, we have a planar wall with three regions, A, B, and C. Uh, in the region B, we have heat generation, um, and there's no generation in A or C. Uh, we also have, um, so we know that because we have heat that's being produced in the center region, there is conduction happening in the direction to go into uh, region A and region C, and convection happening at these boundaries, where you have a fluid that's uh, given to be at 25 degrees Celsius. So the, what we need to find is the rate of heat generation, QB, within volume B, and the thermal conductivity of that section as well. So first of all, we want to state our assumptions. So we know that the wall is at steady state. We want to assume the wall is at steady state, so nothing is time dependent, and we have one dimensional heat transfer. That is, we only care about the heat that's moving in the directions um, perpendicular to the volumes in those two. Um, so first, the first thing we can do for questions like this is build the thermal circuit. So you can basically see each of these regions as having effective resistances. And the driving force that will determine the direction and the amount of heat transfer is the temperature difference. Uh, because we have heat generation occurring in the central volume, there's actually a break in the circuit. So we're going to have to split this up into two circuits on different sides of wall B. So we can start at T infinity, which is just a fluid where convection is happening. Um, that has a certain resistance. And then we reach wall A and eventually reach T1, uh, which is given in this problem. Because we have heat generation occurring in the middle, there's a break in the circuit. And then on the right, we have basically a parallel cir or a symmetric circuit. So we have T2 here. Um, at the end of the wall, we have temperature Tc. And we reach T infinity. Um, so the next step would be to find the resistances that each of these regions faces. Um, so we know that for convective purposes, the resistance is equal to 1 over h, the heat transfer coefficient. And when we're considering conduction, then the resistance is equal to the length over k. Um, and just to also put in the fluxes into this uh, diagram, we'll note that there is heat generation occurring in the middle, and because energy has to uh, remain constant, we have a flux of Q1 heading to the left, and Q2 right. Okay, um, so what we can do next is find these values, Q1 and Q2, in order to do our energy balance. Um, so the heat flux is always going to be equal to the temperature difference, which is the driving force that we have, divided by the total resistance. Since you can see that these are effectively a thermal circuit, the resistances between this region for the convection and this region for the conduction can just be added in series. So in general, we can find the heat flux to be a temperature gradient divided by a thermal resistance, the sum of thermal resistances. So for Q1, we have that the flux is equal to the difference in temperature between T1 and T infinity divided by the sum of the thermal resistances. Um, for the wall A, we have LA over KA. And for convection, we have 1 over H. Um, we can simply sum in these values because all of these are given. Uh, so we know that temperature of 1 is 261. Um, T infinity is 25. Length of A is 30 millimeters, so 0 0.03 meters, divided by uh, Ka 25 plus 1 over 1,000. And this gives us a flux of 107.300 watts per meter squared. Um, so we can effectively do the same thing for the second flux, Q2. Uh, it's a very similar calculation where you have T2 minus T infinity 
over LC over KC plus 1 over H. Um, when we substitute in our values, we get 211 minus 25 over 0 0.02 over 50 plus 1 over 1,000. That gives us a flux of 132,900 watts per meter squared. So now we want to consider an energy balance on the volume B. So we know that we have Q being generated in the center, uh, where we have two fluxes, Q2 and Q flux of 1 times the area. Uh, because the value Q over here is a volumetric value, um, if we want to do the complete energy balance, so basically match units, so make sure we're working in something like kilojoules instead of kilojoules per meter cubed, um, we just want to multiply this value by the volume. Um, and the dimensions we have here are minus LB and positive LB. Since we already have the fluxes, we can essentially just do an energy balance on this, uh, which I will do over here, um, and that says that QV is equal to the flux of 1 times the cross-sectional area plus uh, Q2 times, again, the cross-sectional area. Um, so since we can consider that we have a constant cross-sectional area, um, we, can, we want to try to divide out this area because we're not given these parameters. Um, so on the left side, we have that volume is equal to area times the length, uh, which is 2LB and nothing changes on the right side. So we can now cancel out the areas to give an energy balance of QB times 2LB is just equal to the sum of the fluxes. Um, if we solve for QB, we get Q1 plus Q2 over 2LB. Um, substituting in these values, just 107, 300 plus 132,900 over 2 times 0 0.03 gives us a heat generation of 4 times 10 to the 6 watts per meter cubed. Um, so the next part of the question asks us to find the thermal conductivity, Kb. In order to do that, we want to use the heat diffusion uh, equation. Um, so in long form, the one that you have on your equation sheet, it looks like this, where you have di by di x times a constant K, di t by di x, plus di by di y, constant K, di t by di y, plus say for z, plus a heat generation is equal to rho Cp di t by di t. Um, so now we can apply our assumptions. Because we've said that we are only considering 1D heat transfer, uh, the terms in the y and z direction go to zero. And uh, we've also considered that we're in steady state, so nothing is time dependent. So this gives us a differential equation. Uh, we can also assume that the k value is constant. Um, yeah, so this gives us a differential equation of uh, k times di squared t by di x squared plus q is equal to zero. Um, so the next thing we want to do is uh, basically integrate this. So starting over here, uh, we have that di squared t by di x squared is equal to minus q over k. Taking the integral, di t by di x is equal to minus q over k plus a constant. And the actual temperature profile is equal to minus q over k x. So, over 2 k x squared plus c1 x plus c2. Um, so now we just want to substitute in our known boundary conditions. So we know that at T1, um, sorry, at T of 
at the left boundary, so at this point, and this is going to be equal to T1, which is 261 degrees Celsius. We're also given that at the positive boundary, so right over here, the temperature of the wall is at T2, uh, which is 211 degrees Celsius. So you'll note that now we have the temperature profile over here, uh, which has three unknowns, but we actually only have two boundary conditions because the unknowns we have are K, uh, C1, and C2, but we only have two known temperatures. So we essentially need one more relation in order to be able to solve this equation. Um, so in order to do that, we can actually use Fourier's law. which relates the temperature gradient to the flux. Um, so we know that uh, we, can, we can do Fourier's law on either um, the left boundary, T1, or the right boundary, T2. It doesn't really matter. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use the first one. So at minus LB, which is the boundary between A and B, we have that uh, the flux, Q1, is equal to di T uh, by di x. Sorry, minus k times di t by di x um, as Fourier's law. So if you want to isolate um, for the derivative of temperature, di t by di x is equal to minus q1 over k. Um, but we'll note that we actually have two equations now for um, di t by di x. Um, so we can basically use this to solve for one of the constants, c1. Uh, so if we equate this, you get minus q1 over k is equal to minus q over k at minus lb plus c1. Okay. Um, so now we have one equation and we have three boundary conditions in order to solve this. Um, if you carry forward with the calculation, you'll get that kb is equal to 15.3 watts per meter squared Kelvin.